Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to do this simple grain flash transition that I saw in this house tour video. It almost serves as like a film frame transition, but you can create it all in After Effects with built-in effects without having to buy any overlays or anything like that. It's cool to be able to draw inspiration from other types of content. Like I was just watching a house tour video and they had a pretty cool transition and I figured why not use it in a music video setting and show you guys how to do it. Real quick before we get into the video, if you guys haven't already checked out Shake Sauce 2, go ahead and click the link down below. It's my new After Effects plugin that makes making shake inside of After Effects insanely easy. You can save your own custom presets. There's a bunch of already done amazing presets for you and there'll be a seven day free trial link down below. You can try it out 100% risk free, cancel at any time. I guarantee you're gonna love it. Drop a like on the video and let's get into After Effects. Before we get into the video, I do wanna show you where I got inspiration from. It's this Dubai house tour, pretty simple transition you can see right here. And it's really subtle, but I thought it looked really, really cool, especially in the edit. They were playing something like Travis Scott. So it kind of already felt like some music video stuff. But as you can see here, it's kind of just like this blur slash grain transition that kind of flashes up like this. It's rather quick, but it looks really cool in my opinion. So in After Effects, I came up with something pretty similar. I'm going to show you how to sauce it up way more past this. This was just to test that I knew how to do it. So I'm going to show you how to do everything like this. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is make a new adjustment layer above your two clips and then just split it like probably like five, maybe 10 frames long. Uh, so we'll go ahead and split it here and then we'll go forward like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe. Seven frames total and we'll drag it kind of in between these two clips. So nothing's happening and we need to go to our effects and presets. And the first effect I'm gonna drag on is an effect called add grain. And we're just gonna make this transition without any of the shape and mask first. And then I'll go ahead and show you how to mask it out so it just applies to a specific segment of the clip. So we're gonna change the viewing mode to final output. And you can see now the grain's gonna be everywhere. We can go ahead and turn on mon monochromatic. I just personally like the way that looks. And then we can keyframe the intensity from zero to the most intense right at when the clip's cut. So we can maybe do something like 2.7, maybe even a little bit more here. We can even keyframe the size of the grain too. I think that will look pretty cool. So let's start at one, go up to here and just make it maybe a little bit bigger, nothing too crazy. 1.2 goes a long way here, maybe even 1.15. And then we'll keyframe everything back down to one and one here. And then zero here. So you can see it's nothing crazy so far. We have a little bit of that grain. We'll actually go ahead and add some of that exposure just to get that flash transition here. And if we go to the beginning, we can key from the exposure to zero and then have it kind of be a flash. So something maybe around two might look good, 2.5, somewhere around here. And then at the end, bring it back down to zero. So now we have a little bit of grain, a little bit of flash starting to look a little bit better. So the next effect we're gonna add on is called tri-tone and we're just gonna be able to color our clip. So you can do this to any color. I'm just gonna do the red that was in the video because I thought that looked really cool, but I even like this color right here. You can see, you can play around, make it saturated. Honestly, all these colors are gonna look really cool, especially when we do that masking stuff, but let's do the red just because we're inspired by that clip. And we can go ahead and keyframe the blend width from 100 to zero, or maybe, maybe not fully zero. I think it looks cool with like a little bit of opacity and then back down to 100. That way you can see we have a little bit of this kind of flash here and it's already looking closer to what we kind of wanted in the video here. You can see it kind of has this blur here and grain in this section. I'll show you how to accomplish that in just a second, but we're getting a lot closer to kind of what we want. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add, so the next thing I'm gonna do is just make a mask on our adjustment layer. So select on the adjustment layer and then go to the shape tool up here. I'm gonna use the ellipse tool and then kind of just make a rough circle. And then if you select on the masks down here, you can go to the mask path and just kind of click and drag it around wherever you want. In the video, they kind of had it at the bottom right and then scaled up and then back down to the bottom right. You can really do whatever. We'll just kind of follow a similar idea. We're gonna go ahead and bring up the feather of the mask quite a bit. That way it doesn't have like the harsh edges. You can see how it kind of fades in and out now. And we can keyframe the path. We'll keyframe the opacity as well and go to the beginning and move those keyframes there. And I'm actually gonna start off the grain at one and also the tri color at like 68% because we're actually gonna keyframe the mask opacity to kind of fade it in and out. So we'll do the mask opacity at something like 50 at the beginning, all the way at the end, we'll bring it up to 100. And then at the end, we'll do something like 
30 or something like that. So now you can see it just happens in this localized area down here. And this is where we can go through and kind of keyframe this mask path. And if you accidentally move the position of the adjustment layer itself, you can go to transform and then go ahead and just reset that. I sometimes accidentally do that. So click on mask path here specifically, and now you'll be moving the mask path rather than just the whole adjustment layer. So we'll start it down here and then we'll bring the keyframe there. So it starts there, go to kind of like the middle section and kind of just grow it out however you want. It's a little cool if it's not like super uniform looking. So maybe we'll kind of have it like almost go around central C here. I think that could be kind of a cool transition. And then we'll also just have it kind of scale back down into like a circle, maybe at the end. And because we're having it fade out with the mask opacity, I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete the add grain keyframes and the exposure and also the tritone. And then I'm gonna play around with the mask path, maybe make it a little bit bigger here as well. You can also toggle on the motion blur setting here, and it's just gonna make the, the movement of the mask a little bit cleaner. And then one thing I'm gonna do is actually duplicate this adjustment layer, and then we're gonna go to the mask, and instead of add, we're gonna do subtract, and now it's gonna make everything kind of look exactly the same. And we're gonna go ahead and delete the add grain and the tritone and then add on an effect called Gaussian blur. And that's kind of how we're gonna be able to have that blur, not where the grain is. So you can see it'll kind of have a nice blur like this. And let's go ahead, kind of keyframe it at the beginning, make it most intense at the middle. And then it is kind of gonna fade out with the mask opacity already. And then I'm also gonna make the exposure here significantly brighter. Something like that. I'm just going through and tweaking some of the settings, easy using all the keyframes. And then one thing I noticed in their transition is like they kind of have this area of like it being black and white. And you can go ahead and make that by duplicating this adjustment layer again and removing everything besides the tritone and then making this white. And then we should be able to just go to the mask and make the expansion just significantly smaller. And now you can see like if you tweak it where it's small enough in the negative, it'll kind of add this black and white, which it looks really cool. And that's the transition. I mean, it's a really simple grain flash transition. You can go ahead and play around with it as much as you want, customize it. I really like the way it actually ends up looking here. It's just a cool way to kind of have a transition that's kind of like a film burn, kind of like a flash transition, but a little bit more custom. You can go through and really add any effects here on this adjustment layer and use the same concept to create something really unique. And if you haven't already, go ahead and check out Shake Sauce 2. I'll have it linked down below as well as that seven day free trial. That way you can try it out 100% risk-free. But that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. Peace.